So I just want to thank God for the opportunity to introduce my friend and my brother, my sister, uh, Dr. Rosalind and Brother Derek right tonight. I've been knowing them now um, yeah, almost 20 years uh, mm -hmm. from our days, uh, if not more, from our days at Ebenezer. Yes. Amy Church of Fort Washington, where they are faithful members there, but they also are faithful to their call in diet and nutrition. So we just want to welcome them tonight, even as we head into the service, uh, this nice topic discussion, this triumphant Tuesday topic discussion. Uh, I, uh, I I thought in that robbery to uh, bless the Lord for um 62 years plus now of life, but also for this important topic that's critical to the to our community. It's not only critical to the community of believers, it's critical to the community of black and brown folk who look like us, because we have a tendency to dig our graves with our teeth. Uh, in other words, we eat the wrong things. And a part of that, had, it has a historical tale to it, all the way back to us being... Uh, uh, going through slavery and uh, Jim Crowism, segregation, and even in this current time, how diet and nutrition is not a balanced thing as we look at our educational system uh, and the foods that are shared with our children uh, in those public institutions, as well as across our uh, other social structures. But we just thank God for the opportunity to hear from experts in diet and nutrition like Dr. Roz and Brother Derek tonight. So we don't want to thank God. Let's start with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to give you a, a better introduction of them. I'm just going to share via the screen. Come on, let's pray as others come into the room. God, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you. It all starts with worship of who you are. God, we worship you simply because you are our God and allowed us mm -hmm. to see this day. You are more than that. You are creator and sustainer of all things. As a matter of fact, when you put this creation in order, you told us what to eat. You provided for us the right things to eat. It's only when we got out of balance with you that our diets really got out of balance. So God, we want to hear words of wisdom tonight. Endow us with your spirit, your wisdom and knowledge and understanding as we take in the information that's being shared by Dr. Roz and Brother Derek tonight. Uh, and we thank you, God, that you've allowed them to grow in this area of expertise in diet and nutrition so that we might be endowed through their understanding, through what they've gained. And as they pour out into us, God, pour back into them in the name of Jesus. We yeah. thank you, bless you, and praise you in the matchless, mighty, and precious name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 So I see Amen. others that are coming on. See Brother Carl out there after I saw Sister Sonia for a moment. I guess she popped out and will pop back in. And so I want to briefly introduce the Rikes. I, I know everybody is uh, excited tonight, not only about this topic, but about um, what's going to take place at 9 p.m. I want to encourage you to tune in to the presidential debate as well. You can see their bios on the screen. Uh, Brother Dark Wright, he is the CEO of Negate. Uh, the Weight Loss Center. Uh, he and his wife uh, work in, diligently in there. And you can see his background and, and how he has successfully assisted uh, his family members in losing weight. But he's really moved beyond that. He is literally, they are literally assisting churches, as we were discussing prior to coming on or uh, going live. They, they are literally assisting churches across the area in weight loss programs through diet and nutrition. They also have uh, pre-packaged meals, which they'll share with us by the end of this session that they do uh, to ensure that folks are eating right. And so we thank God for Brother Derek. You can see his uh, life coaching skills there, how it led to uh, him being faithful, mental, and disciplined in this approach to weight loss. And then he is Hit, hit his better half. I'm going to say it that way because that I was joking with him earlier. He's in the passenger seat. She's in the driver's seat. He said, well, most time I'm in the driver's seat, but we're we just going to say it like it is. It's because of Dr. Roz, Dr. Rosman Wright, who is certified, as you can see from her credentials, following her name. Amen. Has has over 35, almost 40, oh, probably 40 years now of progressive leadership and clinical health policy and management experience, as well as uh, working along with her husband uh, in this 
um, negate the weight loss center, weight loss center. But you can see her educational experience as well. Uh, she's lectured at colleges and universities. She's done a number of things. I won't go into every detail of her bio, although it's short and concise. You, she's a powerful woman of God. That's all I'm going to tell you. She's a powerful woman of God, and he is a powerful man of God. And together, they make a dynamic duo and a dynamic team. Why don't, we, why don't you welcome them tonight as they take control from here and share with us what we need to know as a church and what we need to share with our families and our communities when it comes to diet and nutrition. Come on, Dr. Wright. Come on, Brother Wright. Lead us in the discussion tonight. God bless you and thank you and welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us tonight. Hello. Good evening, folks. How are you all? Hello. Uh, uh, my name is Derek Wright, and this is Dr. Roz Wright, as uh, Pastor Ruffin just stated. Um, basically, what we're going to go over tonight is how food impacts your body and the way that you live. Um, our motto is a faithful, mental, and disciplined approach to weight loss through healthy eating. Not perfect eating, but healthy eating. One of the things we always tell folk is, even when you start a healthy eating plan or you start a diet, but we never use the word diet because diets don't work. Basically, what's going to happen is you're going to go back to eating some of the foods that you used to eat. At Negate the Weight, what we teach you to do is eat some of those foods that you used to eat so you won't gain back the weight that you lost. Um, like my, like uh, Pastor Ruffin said, my wife have over 40 years of experience. I have over maybe 15 or 20 years of experience in weight loss through healthy eating. Um, you see, we have here, what are your goals? Uh, some of your goals are to lose weight. Some of some of you all goals is what we found is the last, I want to say, um, five or six years, what we really focused on is um, our healthy numbers as far as uh, 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 um, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol. And what we found is sometimes if you just lose 10 or 15 pounds, that will reduce your A1C by two to two to three points on it. Yeah. You know, um, the same thing with your high blood pressure and the same thing with your cholesterol. And one of the things we tell folks is that's just as important as weight loss. Okay. We well, he's know, already did that. Yeah, went over 30 years. Uh, keep going. Okay. Um, and then you can do this. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to share with you the numbers that's so important for you to know, particularly those things that will help you with your heart and your health. And it will help you to understand how to eat healthy because the goal here is to prevent heart disease and other health comorbidities like obesity. And, and, and at the end, we're going to be sharing different foods that you can eat. Um, one of the things that we've been finding recently, it seems like almost every time uh, people go to, go to the doctors for their physical, when they come back, they say they're pre-diabetic. And it's just amazing how many people now are pre-diabetic. And, and what we find is people quickly put people on medications for this pre-diabetes as opposed to encouraging them to eat in a different way to perhaps lose as little as 10 pounds, 15 pounds, and to learn how to eat. And those things then will help with that. So what we're going to do today is to make sure you understand those major things that will help you. And that includes the, the four numbers that you need to know is your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your blood cholesterol, and your body mass index or your BMI. And that's really focusing on in on your weight. So when you go to the doctors, make sure that they share those things with you. All too often, you can be sitting in the doctor's office and they don't go into detail about what these things are and what they do. And, and I was sharing with someone, I guess about two weeks ago, I was taking their blood pressure. And as I started to share with them what that meant, they said to me that um, they've been getting their blood pressure taken for 10, 20 years. And no one ever explained to them what it means when we pump up that machine to get your blood pressure. And what we're doing is we're measuring the force of your blood pressure against the artery walls. So as you pump it, we'll usually get it to a certain number with the ideal goal being less than 120 over 80. For years, your blood pressure could be 140 over 90 and you would be considered to have a very good blood pressure. 
Now it has gone from 140 over 90 to doctors and others um, encouraging us to try to keep our blood pressure less than 120 over 80. And what happens when you're getting your blood pressure read, it, it determines how often or how hard the, the blood is pumping through your vessels. So when we look at it and you hear the top number, the top number represents how hard your heart is pumping when it's at work. The bottom number represents when your heart is at rest. So when you are getting your blood pressure checked, and if that bottom number is over 80, let's say it's 90 or even 100, that means that your heart is having to work very, very hard to get the blood through, even when you're supposed to be at rest. So those are the numbers that's critical for you to know. When we think about blood pressure, one of the first things that always comes to mind is the sodium or salt. And where does the sodium in our diets come from? Um, let's just take a quick look at it. If we take a quick look, we know that typically we add salt when we're cooking. We add salt at the table. Um, we naturally have some salt because you're supposed to have sodium. And then 77% is hidden in processed prepared foods. I'm going to go over a couple more slides and then my husband is going to share more with you in terms of salt and other things and give you some samples of the impact of processed prepared foods. So the normal, the normal level for sodium is going to be 135 to 145. And remember, we said you have to have a certain amount of salt in your, um, in your blood system. Too much will increase your blood pressure and certainly give you an increased risk for stroke. The, the, the level of sodium that we typically say that people can have is 2,300 milligrams. But that 2,300 milligrams is only if you are not age 51 or over, you have a history of high blood pressure, you have a history of diabetes, you're African-American. And so whenever it's any of those things, you need to reduce that number to 1,500. Now, what's critical for you to know is one teaspoon of salt is 2,325 milligrams. Sodium, what it does is it helps us maintain our fluid balance. It helps with contraction and relaxation of muscles. So it is important for you to have sodium. But as we know, when we have too much, there's some key things that we can notice right away. And that means we might start seeing some swelling in our fingers. We might look down and see that our ankles seem to be a little tight or a little swollen. All those things are letting us know that perhaps we have too much salt mm -hmm. and, we, and we are having too much fluid. And so now it's building up. Okay. Um, one of the things we tell folk is uh, one of the most important components of anything that you eat is always reading everything before you eat it. Um, the biggest problem with food that we eat today, 65 to 75% of it is processed. And when it's processed, that means that it's, it has a lot of chemicals in it. But basically the chemicals that really hurt you are salt, sugar, and sodium. And uh, salt and sugar are almost in everything that we eat. It's all, it's all, like I said, it all comes from processed food. So basically what we do is because we run a moderate carb program, basically meaning that you need a certain amount of, you need to eat a certain amount of car carbohydrates per day in order to lose weight, which is 50 to 100 carbs. In order for you to maintain your weight or your weight to stay the same, you need to eat anywhere between 100 to 150 carbs. Most Americans eat over 250 carbohydrates per day. Now, there are differences in different types of healthy eating as far as carbs. If you take, for an example, an uh, 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 Atkins diet, they have, they have a system that's called low carbs. But the reason why we don't focus on low carbs because basically what it does, it, that focuses on basically protein, which is meat. And because you're not getting enough carbohydrates, a lot of times your body can go into what we call ketosis. So that's why we tell you, if you can do a moderate carb program where you eat a lot of, a lot of vegetables, eat a lot of fruit and a minimum amount of meat. Okay. And so the way we do things is 
if you look at this uh, uh, um, uh, slide. slide right here, okay, thank you, honey. it's 32 <laughs> carbohydrates. In our system, basically what we tell you is if you're eating a meal and, it, and, and you're trying to lose weight and it has more than 15 carbohydrates in it, that's too many carbs, don't eat it. If it has more than eight uh, 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 fibers in it of sugar, don't eat it. And if it has over 250 milligrams of sodium, don't eat it. If you look at this slide right here, this has 930 milligrams of sodium. That's entirely too much, entirely too much. So one of the things, like I said, we always tell people is read everything before you eat it. Now, I will say this also, um, the more fiber you have in your food, and, and that's not up on the screen, but the more fiber you have in the, your food, the better it is for you. Okay, so... If you have 20 carbs in, 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 in a meal and it has 10 fiber, 10 grams of fiber in it, then in actuality, what we do is we subtract the fiber from the carbs. So you would actually have 10 carbs, if that makes sense to you all. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I went over the uh, definition. We'll, we'll get into that even more in terms of the whole carbohydrates and fiber when we get to the last one in terms of the body mass index or the weight. So this one is still focusing in on, on blood pressure and those key things. When we go in the store and we're looking at labels and you, you often you'll see sodium-free or salt-free, very low sodium, low sodium, reduced or less sodium, light or light in sodium, and of course, unsalted or no salt added. And the, the challenge when you get these things that have, have zero salt in them and you've been eating salt all your life naturally it is not going to taste that good. So you learn other things that you can use to help make it so the food tastes better. And what we found is, is salt and the way we eat is just like anything else. It's, it's a habit that you formed. So if in 21 days, if you change the way that you're eating and the amount of salt that you're eating, it will get to the point of where you wouldn't even be able to tell. As a matter of fact, when you're seeing something that's light or light in sodium, you might almost feel like it's too salty. We have to be extremely careful with some of our things. And one, I'll give you an example, is chicken noodle soup. I tend to use that one as an example because we all over the, over the course of our lives, whenever we get sick or anybody in our family gets sick, our kids get sick, we quickly get the chicken noodle soup. But one of the things we have to remember when we get that soup is it tells you on the outside of the can to add an extra whole can of water with it. And that's because when you eat just one can of that, you're already at about over 2,000 uh, milligrams of sodium. So you have to be extremely careful with those kind of things. Uh, most foods, as we've shared, they do contain salt. Um, and one of the reasons that they do that is they help preserve the shelf life of foods. I usually like to tell people at this point, I kind of grew up in the in the in the country. So my my dad and they they used to uh um do you know I guess you said slaughter hogs. Yeah, they, they, where they would they would cut the they would they would take a hog, right? And and you hang it up and you and you take out all the different meats and the different things. And they would put it in small cups, uh, yeah, full of full of, full of yeah, salt. Yeah. So therefore, when the winter time came around, they would still be able to go in there, and the meat and everything would still be very, very good, because it's so much salt in it that it's helping preserve the shelf life. And 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 what they do today is they use a similar concept, but what they do with the meat is they inject it with with um with the sodium and salt, and that's why. Basically, when you go to the store, the shelf life is prolonged because because the salt is is used as a they're used as additives and preservatives to 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 pro to prolong the life of the um of the food. And one of the things we always like to tell folk is realistically, there are some foods that you really really kind of need to stay away from, and they're really really processed foods and they're high in a lot of chemicals and sodium, salt, and sugar. And those foods are foods like cereal. Cereal is probably one of the worst foods that you can eat because it's highly concentrated in sodium, salt, and sugar. Salt and sugar are almost in every food that we eat. If you go to the store and buy a link sausage, it has sugar in it. And if you see any components that have, uh, um, what is it, um, corn syrup, corn starch, corn 
uh, those are all just fancy names for sugar. So basically what we tell folk is always read everything before you eat it. And then that way you'll at least know what you're putting in your body. When we think about it, just to snap away for, from salt for a minute, since we're talking about how people preserve the shelf life. I remember growing up, if you bought a carton of milk in about four days or so, the milk would be getting ready to spoil. Now, if you buy a carton of milk or a gallon of milk, if you notice the shelf life or how long that it's it's weak and bread lasts longer. You if you if you get those kind of what's those little muffins that everybody Hawaiian rolls. Yeah. Hawaiian rolls, you 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 have to wonder why they're so good and they last it seems three to four weeks before they start to go bad. So we've got to consider that people are putting different kinds of preservatives into these different foods to make them last a much longer time. So so this is key to monitor those kinds of things, monitor the things we give our kids, those Lunchables and things like that. They are the, full, full, full the, of salt. The, the, the things like the pizza, uh, the chips, the ice cream, the cookies, cakes, pies, muffins. Uh, french fries, candy, hot dogs, pasta, bread. Those are things that are all highly concentrated in salt and sugar. And realistically, they're not good for you at all. Okay. Then these are foods that usually raise your blood pressure. Table salt, baking soda, baking powder, sauces, um, teriyaki, soy salad dressing. These are just some of the things that we have uh, listed here. Cheese, pickles, canned vegetables, instant soups, as we just went over earlier. Roasted and salted nuts, seeds, pretzels, chips. Um, you can go back to, like like I said, muffins, french fries. Anything that has a lot of sugar and salt in it are basically down. And one of, these, one of the reasons why they do this, too, is they do it so that the food can taste good. A lot of times the food tastes good. And what happens is, because it has a lot of salt and sugar in it, especially the sugar, what it will do is it will spike your blood sugar level and make your blood sugar go up. And that's what will subsequently make you hungry faster than what you normally would be because of the type of food that you're eating. So like I said, you just have to be mindful of what you're putting in your body. Okay, and the, like I said, these are foods that usually lower blood pressure. Uh, olive oil, garlic, asparagus, kale, spinach, um, celery, beets. One of the things we tell folk is, um, in order for you to be successful and eat healthy, um, eat a lot of vegetables, drink a lot of water, eat a lot of fruit, and eat a lot of fish. And we'll kind of go over some of that, like um, like I said, towards the end. But um, just like we said, here's the other slide. Check your food labels. Uh, we use a lot of herbs and spices with our food. We don't use a lot of salt. We don't use a lot of the seasonings that we use are natural seasonings. You know, we cut them up and all that. We don't normally get them from a big jar or bottle or anything like that. Um, uh, and one of the one of the best things that you can't eat is um, or use is uh, olive oil. You know, uh, olive oil, grapeseed oil. Try to stay away from uh, uh, um, can canola oil and um, what what's what a uh, vegetable oil and those because basically what happens with those oils are olive oil when you when you when you use olive oil it kind of lubricates your arteries. What happens is when you lose, when you use um, vegetable oil, it clogs your arteries because it sticks in your body. So that's why food stay in your system a longer period of time. That's why you stay away from foods like pasta, uh, 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 French fries, um, potato chips, those type of foods, because they're made with a lot of time vegetable oils and those oils are not good for you. Yeah. Because okay. what is that? Back in the day, remember when we used to, the fried chicken would be so good because- A lard. Yeah, that <laughs> lard. When you use <laughs> when you yeah. use lard, it would it would make the best 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 fried chicken. But the one thing we got to remember is when when our our ancestors were eating all of this lard and everything. You remember they were out in the fields and out everywhere working and working and working. So they would that would then help they to were, they were kind of work work, it work off some yeah. some of that. Yeah. We want to move now to the next thing that you need to be aware of, and that is your blood sugar. So what exactly is the blood sugar? The blood sugar is the amount of your sugar in your blood and is measured using the HbA1c, which is the hemoglobin A1c, or you hear people just say A1c, or you hear people say the fat and blood sugar, but most of us really say, or the sugar. We'll say that the, you know, the, the sugar, our sugar was too high, 
We'll say the doctor say I got the problems with the sugar. And we all know now we'll hear people saying, well, they say my A1C is too high. Um, and, and so we have to take a good, good look at those things. And the interesting thing about that is recently we have had some clients that really didn't need to lose weight, but the A1C was very, very high. And when we looked at the A1C to try to determine why their blood sugar was so high, considering that the weight was not a problem. And we discovered it was really just what they were eating in terms of the different things that had too much sugar in it. The interesting thing is we've had several people, I would say over the last two weeks, that tell us that they get the, the tea and the lemonade from Chick-fil-A and they mix it together and they drink gallons of it. Well, well, needless to say, if that's what you're drinking, you're going to find that that A1C level is going to go up. And remember, as soon as it starts getting into that pre-diabetic stage, the next thing you know, people want to put you on medication for it. And, and these medicines are so expensive, but you also can't help but wonder, you know, why is it that they seem, you know, I don't know, the pharmacists and pharmacy and different doctors and all of that, why are they so quick to label you as a pre-diabetic? Because in actuality, that's how they make a profit. And one of the things we're telling people is, these these new medicines, the Ozempic, the um, all of these medicines that you basically, for the lack of a better term, shoot yourself up with. Those medicines are not good for you. And in the end, you know, we they've already had done studies where people coming back with uh, stomach paralysis, um, they're having heart attacks. You know, so one of the things we tell people is, you know, the pills, the tea, the um. All, if you just learn how to eat healthy, you can eliminate all of these, all, all of those things, because there is no quick fix to uh, weight loss and there is no quick fix to healthy eating. And like I always tell people, it's not perfect eating, because like I said, eventually you're going to eat some of the things that you used to eat. But if but if you've lost, like we had a lady that lost, um, as a matter of fact, the lady that was um, the AKA, I think she lost 45 pounds and she went to Texas and she came back and she had gained like three pounds and she was kind of starting to get upset. But I told her, how can you get upset? When you came to us, you was 45 pounds uh, uh, heavier and now you're 41 pounds lighter. You know, you're still winning. And she said she feel better. You know, she moved better. Um, we also have a lady that's in that church. She's in her seventies. Um, about two, uh, two years ago, she came to us. Um, she was diabetic. The doctor had put her on metformin. She had been with us since April. I mean, was, was it April? Yes. Mm -hmm. By the time I want to say July, August rolled around, she wasn't diabetic anymore. The doctor took her off of metformin. And this is one of the things that we've really, really been working on because we see this is one of the biggest challenges that's in the church and the fraternities and sororities and just in life. A lot of our people now, the first thing they do is when we go to the doctors, they want to put us on medication. It usually starts out where you're pre-diabetic and then the next thing they say you have high blood pressure and then the next time you go back. And all of this was in a three to four month period. Now they got you on high blood pressure medicine and, and diabetes medication. And basically what you need to realize is that if you just lose sometimes 15, 10, 15 to 20 pounds, you know, the doctor will take you off of that. And here's a, a simple measurement to go by. If you are a man and your waist is 40 or above, then you're considered a beast. If you are a female and your waist is 35 or above, you're considered a beast. So one of the things, and and one of the things you need to do is be conscious of that. And one and, and another thing is. What people don't realize is as we get older and our metabolism slow down, we don't process food the way we used to. And on top of that, and most importantly, the food is not as good as it used to be because the food is so processed now. So our metabolism has slowed down. So now we have food where I always tell people, if I tell you to go over to Giant and you buy a pound of hamburger, I can sit it on the table and I can come back a week later and it's still red because it has so many additives and preservatives in it. It's, they're put in there to prolong the, the shelf life of the food. So basically what we're dealing with now is we're dealing with a lot of processed food. My thing is, realistically, you're going to deal with some processed food, but at least know what you're dealing with. Uh, learn how to read labels and learn how to realize that what you're putting in your body 
can actually have more of a side effect than just eating. And then you have to remember that the new medications, all of these new shots, the Zipix and all of these different things, those things are designed for people that actually have diabetes. So, But you do have a number of people, though, that are getting these shots because they really, really want to lose weight. Now, the most interesting thing that happened with someone that was on those shots that wanted to lose weight was, was she about 45, 47 years old, something like that, and she became pregnant. She had been taking um, medication, birth control pills to control that. And we found out that some of those medications actually interact with the birth control pills. And some of these things, people, they're not, they're not telling people. And so you just have to be very, very careful, read everything, make sure that you read those little literature things that they have for you. We used or, to tell our or, people. Or look it up yourself. Yeah. Because a lot of times they won't give you those things because realistically, that's how doctors make money also. They make money by the pharmaceutical companies and all of those things. So, oh, and 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 don't get us wrong. We're not anti-doctor. You know, we, we're not, you know, the, the thing is what you have to do is you just have to be cognizant and be aware of what you're putting in your body or what you're putting in your system. Even if the doctor's telling you, if 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 the doctor gives you a medication, look it up. Don't just, you know, say that, okay, doc, you know, I'm gonna do, just look it up and see if it's good for you. Yeah, okay. And then usually what we'll do is, is I'll tell people, especially, especially if I know someone and I'm, that, that they have a blood pressure issue or they have a blood sugar issue. So then I'm starting to monitor that every time when they come into the office. So when it's time for them to go back to the doctor, I don't say to them, okay, stop taking all of this medicine right away. No, no, no. You continue with the medicines that they have prescribed. But what we then do is to send back to the doctor. This is what this person's blood pressure is every single time that it's yeah. been checked. Well, what usually happens is when you come to us, if you're in our weight loss program, every week we check your um, blood pressure. And what we do is we monitor that and we write it down every week. And what we found is if you stay with us for a certain period of time, I would say, realistically, I would say three to five months. When you go back to the doctor, if you do what we tell you to do and eat what we tell you to eat, I would say seven times out of 10, the doctor has either lowered that person's blood pressure medication or taking that person off the blood pressure medication completely. And basically what it all boils down to is what you eat. When you look at these, these, this, this food chart right here that tells you these are really high and um, uh, that raises your blood sugar, white rice, wheat, pro wheat products. A lot of times people think wheat bread is good for you, but a lot of times wheat bread is not good for you because it has enriched grainy white flour in it. So, you know, one of the things you need to, and I can't emphasize this enough, Everything that you read that's telling you something is healthy not might not necessarily be healthy. That's just done so they can market their product and 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 uh, have you to eat it because you know they they want you to think that it's healthy. Um, potato chips, French fries. These are just some of the basic things: the cookies, cakes, and candies and pies. We have a client right now, and um, he went to the doctor. He was pre pre diabetic. He does not to need he does not need to lose any weight at all. But what we've done is we started to work with him. And every week, what we do when when um, when uh, he comes into the office, what we do is we check his A1C. No, so, we check his blood sugar. Uh, 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 no, I'm sorry. We check his blood sugar. And what we found since he stopped eating, because he had this craving for cookies, cakes, pies, sodas, juices and all those type of things since he stopped that his a1c is his blood, I mean, sugar. blood sugar i don't know why i keep saying and, that. and the reason i keep interrupting when he's saying no that you're is right because, because the a1c what that really does is it measures your blood sugar for a total of about three months so that's why when you go and get your a1c done and if they tell you that you're going to, to come back and they can check it it's usually they'll come back you'll come back in about three months and whatever that is, it's giving them an average of what your blood sugar actually is. And I will say this, when you when you do come to us, when you go back three months, that A1C is down by at least two points. Yep, it's usually you know? down. And if you stay with us long enough, or if you just eat what we tell you to eat long enough, you'll get off of the medication, okay? And these are foods that, that I'm usually lower blood sugar. And I don't know if you all are writing this down, but you might want to write some of this stuff down. 
just um, for your own. Um, or, or when uh, since it's being recorded, maybe get right, a chance right, to relook right, at it right. because we're going over some of these slides very, very quickly. Um, but it's important for you to be able to really see some of these things and identify. And one of the things I think my husband shared with you is, is that um, there's no real, per he always tells people this, there's no perfect eater. Um, it, for the most part, we tend to eat food for everything. We eat food when we're happy. We eat food when we're sad. You know, any kind Generals, of weddings. And you know, and um, here's one thing we tell people. Um, okay, we'll be friends with this person. We've been in the church or whatever. We we go out to brunch with him every Sunday. Okay. I hate to say it, but this person drops dead from a heart attack. Okay. And we all said and everything. Okay. So we go to the funeral. We go to the repast, we go to the wake, and we do all that stuff. Then we go to the grave. And when we come back, we come back to the repast. We end up eating the same food that actually put that guy in a grave. We end up eating the ham, the mashed potatoes, the bread, the macaroni and cheese, the sweet potatoes, you know, all those things. So we, one of the things we emphasize is uh, uh, um, really, like I said, be conscious of what you eat, how you eat, and when you're eating it. Now, when you get back to from, from the grave and you're hungry, basically what we can do is we show you how to eat some of those foods so you know you won't be hungry, and, and that'll hold you until you get home. But one of the things we focus on is learning how to eat better. You know, so um, go ahead, honey, give me start. So, so the next couple of slides are going to address body mass index and your cholesterol levels. Um, with the cholesterol level, I think, we kind of know, or we've heard talk about that, that it's it's like a waxy substance. And if, if somebody has a high cholesterol over time, their arteries can, uh, can you know, they can get plaque in the arteries. Um, it, it becomes sten stenosis. It can be to the point of where the blood is just not circulating through the, properly. you know, properly. And so you want to make sure that you look at those cholesterol levels it's, it's 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 tricky at times because there are people will talk about well what's your good cholesterol what's the low cholesterol what's the high that kind of thing and and, and mm -hmm. if you don't mind me you what happens is when you go to the doctor and you don't understand these things when you come to see us my wife will explain these things to you because a lot of this can get into the, the technical terminology and all that kind of stuff and realistically if you're not in the medical field you might not understand this all you know you have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol right honey mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and trying to decipher that as a layman can be an issue that's why I, and you know even if you're not in our weight loss program we have people that call my wife all the time with questions like that you know uh, I went I mean I went to the doctors and they said my cholesterol was it what does that mean and we're always more than willing to um answer questions you know if if people have any questions pertaining to their health okay right. now these are foods that usually raise your cholesterol. And these are fried foods. Yeah, I went over them already. The, the, you know, the chips, the um, the bacon, the sausage, and all of And a lot of times those are processed foods. So one of the things we tell people is, um, you know, we all know when you go to church, a lot of times on Sundays, everybody want to go to brunch. But, you know, when you go to brunch, basically we can show you how you eat when you go to brunch where you don't necessarily, you know, we tell people it's something as simple as don't eat a whole waffle, eat a half a waffle, eat turkey bacon instead of uh, pork bacon, eat, you know, I, I, eat, 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 a, um, eat an omelet as opposed to eating uh, uh, pancakes and waffles. So it's just some different tricks to the trade. And, you know, go to brunch once a month as opposed to going every Sunday after church. So it's just some things that where you need to become conscious of, you know, because one of the things I tell people is, you know, and I think the reason why we're really addressing the, the with the churches is, you know, a lot of times people get fed spiritually when they go to the church, but ultimately what happens is, is anybody talking to you about your health? You know, you know, you know, you know, just like you said earlier, Pastor, you know, a lot of times, and and you know, this is the old saying from our pastor, people end up digging their graves with their teeth. You know, and and it's it's not because you're purposely doing it, but you're doing it because you really, really don't know what you're putting into your right. body. So one of the things we tell people is at least learn what you're putting in your body, and then you can make an informed decision about what you're going to put yeah. in your body. And that's why we we actually passed the rough, and that's why we didn't hesitate to to come before your people again to talk about these kind of things because it's encouraging to us when you have a pastor that's not not just concerned about the, the spiritual health, but also about the, phys physical, the health. physical health. And so so 
when we have a pastor that's, that's, that's like that, then that's important that hopefully your congregation understand that you then care about them. And you want them around for a long time. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, and, and so then we start talking about uh, uh, different kind of foods that usually will lower the cholesterol, um, salmon, your, your oats, avocado. You know, you know, one of the things I tell folk is the healthiest way to eat, and I said it earlier, eat a lot of vegetables, eat a lot of fruit, and try to eat fish at least two or three times a week, um, and try to eat meat at least one or two times a week. If you do that and drink four 16-ounce bottles of water per day, people don't understand how important water is. And what people will usually say is they'll usually say, well, I drink a lot of water. You think you drink a lot of water until you try to measure drinking four 16-ounce bottles of water per day. Now, one of the things we tell people is the reason why it's really, really important to drink water is because in order for us to live, we need to eat and we need to drink. Now, the way I describe it is the food acts as the gas, like you're putting gas in your car. The water acts as like you're putting oil in your car. Mm -hmm. If you don't put enough oil in your car, what will happen is your engine will burn up. And the way your body works is this. We have what's called synovial fluid in our spinal column, which is probably one of the most important parts of our body. If we don't drink enough water, what happens then is your body will start taking fluid from your elbows, your back, your vertebrae, your knees, your ankles, because that synovial fluid need to have that fluid. So that's why we come up with that. I mean, not, uh, um, mm -hmm. arthritis stiffness in the joints, you had trouble with your back pain and all of that because you're not drinking enough water. So that's why we tell folk it's really, you know, water is the oldest colon cleanser that we have. It helps to flush your system, but it also helps to lubricate your system. And I think it's 75 to 85% of mm -hmm. our body is made up of water. Yep. So that's why we need to continue to put water in our system. And, and so going back to with the, the BMI, um, what that does is a measurement of the body fat and it's calculated using your height and weight. Um, the ideal goal is typically 8.5 to 24.9. Um, usually we try to have people stay at a BMI of around 25, but I will be very candid with you and share that with the BMI, um, when all of this and everything was developed, um, we were not necessarily used a lot in, in the research. So as a, as a result, some of these things might not uh, represent exactly where we are, which is why when people come to see us and we're trying to figure out what they want their weight to be, um, we're not like some of the other weight programs where they say, this is what you have to weigh. Well, well, well in actuality, the whole BMI was based on a European concept. We're not built like European people. So, you know, what we do is when you come to us, what we do is we take that scale and we move it over a couple of times. Um, to give you an example, I'm about six feet. My BMI says I should weigh 173 pounds. I haven't been 173 pounds since I was like 25 or 26 years old. I wouldn't want to be 173 pounds. So basically what we do is we try to make it realistic with the people that we know and the body structures that we see. But it's not... Uh, end all be all it's just something that we use it's just one of the tools as we use to kind of get a gauge for where you technically kind of should be but you know if you came to us and you wanted to lose 30 pounds and you lost 20 pounds and you said i don't want to lose any more weight then that's fine that's on you or if you came to us and you said i, I don't want to lose any weight but i have a problem with with uh diabetes then what we could do is we could show you how to eat where you don't lose any weight and you still could get off of that medication so, you know, those are those are just some of the things that we uh, focus on. And me, I, I well, so I don't know if I'm vertically challenged as far as the height, oh, but I'm are. certainly not six feet. <laughs> and, and most people look at me and they'll say, oh, you're small, you're small. But my weight is not at those beginning levels on that BMI chart. And in fact, if my weight was down there, people would, I, I think I wore that weight like in high school or something. Yeah. So, so, and I, and I consistently try to stay within, I'm at the BMI level, um, I, but I'm at the high end of the BMI well, it's, as it's, opposed yeah. to the and, and lower. And most of us are, most of us You know, are. that's, that's where I try to, yeah. to keep myself. And then here's some foods that usually lead to weight loss. And I think my husband mentioned to you earlier about how important it is to include fish 
in your in your diet. But these are some other things. I always strongly, strongly encourage berries because berries, not only do they help with losing weight, but they're antioxidants and they help with memory. The berries are some of the best things that you can use for your health. So I try to eat like, the blue. I didn't like blueberries a lot at first, but then the more you eat them, the more I like them. So and, you have blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, all of those berries and, and, are helpful. And believe it or not, some of the worst foods, worst fruits that you can eat, if you're not going to actually physically work out, uh, uh, pineapples, watermelon, papaya, um, bananas, because they're highly concentrated in sugar. And what the, here's the way I explain those fruits. If you're going to eat those fruits and go to the gym, that's fine because you're going to go and work it off. But if you're going to eat pineapples and watermelon and a banana in the morning and go sit behind a cubicle, that's not good because what, what it's going to do is it's going to spike your blood sugar level because they are highly concentrated in sugar. And that will make you hungry faster. Fruit, uh, fruits like blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, like my wife just pointed out, because they have a little concentration of sugar, they don't make you hung as hungry as fast. Right. So then you have apples, oranges, those are also good for you. Peaches, pears, you know, but it's certain fruits that we tell you to stay away from if you're right. trying to lose weight. And then the other thing that happens is when, for, for people that's taking various medications for the blood pressure, oftentimes people will say, well, you need to eat a banana because you need to make sure you're putting extra potassium back in your system. But there are a lot of other ways that you can put potassium without putting bananas. Greens, right? You can use greens. Greens are high in yeah, potassium. Greens are good. Oranges, tangerines, all of those are, are, are good and are not as high in um, sugar. sugar and carbohydrates. Right. Okay, that's that's it. Uh, if you all have any questions, um, let us know. Um, this is our information. If you're interested, like I said, uh, um, Pastor Ruffin, you know, maybe we can talk and maybe we can come down and, you know, do do something with your uh, church or, um, you know, maybe we could uh, uh, um, introduce uh, some of the food that we have to you all. Um, you know, we'll talk and maybe, you know, we can work something out. Because like I said, what we are, basically what we've been doing over the last two years is we've been focusing on churches and believe it or not, sororities and fraternities. We probably had about 10 or 15 cues. Yeah, at least. And they've at lost least. a lot of weight. We've had a lot of AKAs, believe it or not, come through us and lose, and lose a lot of weight. Um, the Delta's not so much, but you know, but we, this is our third church inside of um, what? Six months, yeah, remember, yeah. 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 So, uh, um, I really think that's the way God is leading us. Um, because I, I, I thank God He gave me this gift, gave us this gift of trying to help people to eat healthy. Because ultimately, if you don't eat healthy, a lot of times it's not even that you uh, uh, end up in bad health, but it, you end up in health where you always have a lot of nagging issues, you know, like I said, with the cholesterol and the blood pressure, and, you know, when you got the diabetes, if that's too bad, then they start cutting off stuff on you and all those kind of things. So these are just. And weight, weight, weight is a, a tricky issue, um, particularly for women. So, so generally when it comes to actually the weighing component, I'm usually the person that will always be the be the person that weigh people. Um, sometimes people will call me females in particular um, when it comes to that whole that whole weight thing because I mean it's just a um, it can be a sore spot. It's 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 one of those things like how sometimes people don't want to tell you their age. Well, more often than not, people a lot of times don't want to really talk about what their um, what their weight is until they start seeing other things and other ways that they can do things. And as, as my husband shared with you, um, we don't hesitate to leave our, our cell phone numbers on this on these screens and at these different things because you know sometimes people call and they have questions and, and we don't have any problem with trying to answer or help people um, because you know, just to try to help people with the, to, what is it to live a best a, a best life? Yeah, yeah, is that the thing? Yeah, yeah. To live your best life. Yeah. Best life. Well, yeah. well we so certainly thank, thank both of you. Um, I, that if, if anyone has any questions now, um, now's the time to ask them. Uh, I want to just thank uh, Dr. Riot and Brother Derek for sharing what they have <laughs> shared. 
I do want to encourage them, Dr. Uh, Brother Derek. I sent you a text message while you were talking because I thought okay. about the fact that we're having a community day. Okay. On the 2nd of September, and that will give you another opportunity to right, come. Right. Not right. only will you be talking with us, we're actually partnered with two additional churches that are a little yeah. larger than us. Uh, Emmanuel AME Church, I think you may know Pastor Gladney in, in, in yeah. Fredericksburg, Virginia, as well as the Kingdom Development Center. They're right there, co-located with us. Okay, great. This would give you an opportunity to All also right. come out and share with us as we stuff hamburgers and hot dogs down our throat um, <laughs> and potato chips, too. Uh, you know, the benefits of uh, of diet and nutrition or, or good eating and nutrition. Right, exactly, right. exactly. I'll say it this way in the book of Daniel, and, and, and you know, we do know that uh, who we, Daniel, and who we refer to as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, that they were uh, facing a situation where the king was trying to, king exactly, exactly. Trying to force them to eat certain foods right, and right. certain wines. And, and Daniel uh, insisted that if you just give us water and vegetables, it, we'll exactly, be okay. Exactly. Uh, and if you, if you just do that for 10 days and come right. back, and us, you shall see. So I want to encourage us that this is scripturally sound, making sure that we're eating the right things. We've had a uh, a number or a series on financial well-being, and now what we're doing is shifting into uh, a, a fitness uh, discussion, right. fitness series, if you will. And we started with diet and nutrition. What good would it be to have all the money in the world? Amen. Amen. And lose your soul. Not only lose your soul, but to die because you can't take your money with you because you're not healthy. Your right. health is your wealth. That's what Amen. I want us to understand. And all of us, and I'm waving my hand, you just going in and out, but I'm waving my hand <laughs> to let you know that we all need to look at what we're eating and we all need to um, try to ensure that we're taking in nutritious things. I was walking in the driveway this evening and noticed all of the trees that God had planted around the little area that we live in. There's a walnut tree, there are wild berries, there are honeysuckle, right. everything that God provided for the birds of the air and the, and the beasts of the field and they, and they eat it and they're fine. Exactly. <laughs> Here exactly. we are eating all these processed foods. Exactly. I can take more pills than anybody. Right. Any, right. any other community, we're taking more pills than yeah, any yeah. other community. Yes. And it's, is killing us. I'm mm -hmm. not saying the doctors are trying to kill us. I'm saying that the pills, our diet, what we take into our bodies is causing us to have bad health. And then right. we're trying to chase that with something, uh, with medications that also have side effects that, exactly. that, that, that uh, don't uh, always help us. Um, and it's not a matter, I want to point this out. I was, my wife went for uh, an exam earlier uh, this weekend and she's fit when right. i say she's fit she's fit yeah yeah it's not always where you are as far as your cholesterol now uh, and i'll be honest i take a statin for my cholesterol right, right. also your predisposition is your genetic makeup yeah right, when right. You look at her history they you know they move they want her to move to a diet that's more compatible to her blood type now right mm -hmm. she doesn't have to worry about her cholesterol doesn't have right. to worry about taking a statin because uh, she insists she's not going to take a statin so right <laughs> so i know that you know we're about to have a bunch of vegetables and some fish around here <laughs> but it was amen well can i can i say something though honey before you oh, say yeah. all of those things that you're talking about yeah. um and so they did not recommend necessarily a statin what they said to me was that all of my ldls and triglycerides and all of those things are fine um, they're in the right range. My heart is healthy. It's good. It's pumping as it should. But they said due to my lipoprotein A um, score, it is three times higher than where it should be. Mm. And because there are no drugs there out there for that particular, to lower that lipoprotein A, which in my mind would be very similar to me, to a statin, it won't be on the market, I think she said, for FDA perspective for the next two to three years. In order to combat that, she thought that I should lower my LDL. There's nothing actually wrong with my LDL right now. It's in the right range as it should be. But her thought was if you could go down five points or so or lower, it will kind of offset the fact that your lipoprotein A from a genetic perspective, which you cannot change, um, it, it'll kind of offset some of that risk. So that was her recommendation. Right. So I will do that. 
but I'm not sure how low I can get it, obviously, but um, I will work to Sometimes. get it as, you know, as low as what's possible. So that was her recommendation. And, and in, your, in your case, and but you are, your, your husband was sharing all of these different things that you're doing, um, exercise will we'll help with that as well. Um, and I'm not necessarily talking about uh, going somewhere, lifting weights, doing all of that. I'm talking about basic kind of exercise, like like your walking, uh, you know, yes, step, you know, just things yeah. that, that help with your your heart. Or to tell you what my husband does to me, we go to Sam's Club. He parks the car at the farthest end <laughs> of the parking lot. Now I tell him, no woman wants you to park them at the, in fact, I took some pictures so I tell <laughs> people how, how he parks me all the way to the end. And then he'll say, well, you're trying to get some exercise, right? <laughs> well, let, me, hold on. let me say this. It's a mindset. If you, and people don't realize this, if you go to the grocery store once a week and you pack park all the way in the back and you do that for a year, you'll lose 12 to 16 pounds. And it's just from walking in. Now, here's the way I describe exercise. When you get out of bed and you put one foot on the floor and you put the other foot in front of the other foot, you're exercising. We just left Myrtle Beach um, last week. And what we do is when we go to Myrtle Beach, you know, of course, we're going to have fun and all that kind of stuff. But we try to get in at least 6,000 to 10,000 steps per day. And, you know, instead of driving down to the Ferris wheel, we'll walk. And, and then we'll walk back and then we'll walk the beach and then we'll walk. So you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to um, do anything like that as far as exercising, you know, but exercising is just moving. It does, you know, if you have yeah. steps in your house, just go up and down your steps. If you, you know, once, once you get a certain age, it's hard to go to the gym three or four times a week. It's hard, you know, it's hard. So what you have to do then is, is you have to, as I said, because we get older and we have wisdom, we should work smarter, not harder. And plus, man, it's how, if you ever go to the gym and then you work, you work out for a couple of days, you so you so sore for the next two weeks, you will never see a gym again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my thing is now I just stick to walking. Um, every now and then I I do a little light jog, but it's just walking, you know. And 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 it, it's not. It's, I don't consciously say, "Well, I'm gonna walk ten miles today." Sometimes I do. 3,000 steps, 4,000 steps, you know, but for the most part, like I said, a lot of this stuff is mental and it's just um, really becoming conscious about what's going on with your body. One of the things I tell people is as we get older, all of us going to have an issue because your body starts to deteriorate as you get older. And I used to say something is going to be wrong with all of us, but I don't think that sounds too good. But the reality of it is, to, to, to give an example, Pastor, I woke up. Four, about about three months ago, I had arthritis in my shoulders. It wasn't nothing wrong with my shoulders. But what happened was when I went to put my sport coat on, my coat on to go to church, and I reached back my arm, the pain shot through my arm. So it's but I'm thinking, where did this where did this come from? You know, it ain't like I'm digging ditches all day. But as you get, oh, I just turned sixty six. So as you get older, that's you know, it's it's like just but. The issue is, okay, so now what do I do? I went to the doctor. They have put me in therapy. You know, I'm going to be doing some different things. But I'm saying all that to say, as you get older, you need to be more conscious about what's going on with you. And your body will let you know. And um, as far as your wife is concerned, um, what did you just feel like she needed? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think well, she walks a lot. So it's not, it's not, she walks it. To be honest with you, to me, your wife was always in good shape. She wasn't. She's, she's exercising. It's just, yeah, yeah, I think it's her yeah. predisposition. I think it's, a, yeah. you know, the fact her family yeah. history. Yeah. Right, and, that, right. and those kind of things. I mean, we, we don't have any control over our family history and, and genetics in terms of the things that can happen to you. But what we can do is think through science as we learn things that will help. We can try to do those things that will that will help, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, but uh, 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 getting back to you, yeah, just just uh, eat a lot of fish, man, and try to try to like even if you're gonna fry anything, just try to fry it in olive oil, just saute it in olive oil, because you know olive oil it flows through your system, and that go back to biblical terms. You know, they use oil with you know to, to when the oil flowed, and um, that's why a lot of a lot of times Italians. Um, 
they they eat a lot of processed food, but a lot of times they don't have heart attacks because they eat a lot of olive oil and the food kind of flows through their system. But anyway, let me ask, look, let me ask one more time though, if there were any additional questions from the audience uh, to make sure and that, that we cover those. And if they don't share them now, if they think of them, you see the comments. Yeah, yeah, give us a call. That number's please, are on the screen. Please feel free. Sometimes people have questions, but they don't necessarily want to ask them in front of people. So please feel free to give us a call. All right. Okay. Well, we want to thank you so very much. Uh, the right, the, the right team for I like that. The right team for sharing with us this information. Uh, we do look forward to seeing you uh, prayerfully again, prayerfully at the community day. Uh, I've sent you the flyer to send you the vendor application as well. Okay. Uh, we have a committee to kind of handle. Yes. Um, we just wanted to make sure we really, me and my husband, we enjoy all the information that we retrieve. We just want to make sure that we're looking forward to seeing them on the community day. We'll have a table set up for you ready yeah. to Fantastic. share Fantastic. knowledge Fantastic. with the community and and as well as some of the other um, uh, members of our church and the other churches that will be joining us. Praise and God. Praise for, God. For all the information that you have given to us and uh, me and my husband going back and forth. I think I'm going to be eating a lot of fish as well because right. uh, my um, cholesterol was kind of high when I went to the doctor and I was right. just diagnosed as a diabetic three, but right there at 6.5. So, right, yeah. Right, uh, right. yeah. so uh, I understand and I, I'm I'm really 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 all excited and, and and eager to meet you guys and talk further on some of the things. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Well, you know, like I said, you know, I I I talk to the pastor, and <laughs> we we can see if we we might be able to set something up where um, you know, we'll work it out, Pastor. I'm not going, you know, I don't want to, you know, you know, we 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 because really, man, this is is. It's really about all of us collaborating with each other, and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's all about helping each other. You know, that's 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 really what it's all about. But look, man, I appreciate you. You reach out to me all the time, bro. And it's like I said, man, I'm proud of you, man. And you 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 know came a long way. You're doing great <laughs> things. To God be the glory, bro. To Amen. God, glory. God bless you all. Let's have a closing word of prayer. And before we have the prayer, I just want to put the public service announcement in there that at nine o'clock, there will be a presidential debate on tonight <laughs> with, with uh, presidential hopefuls, uh, Kamala Harris, as well as that other dude. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for what has been shared tonight. We thank you, God, that you have folk in position to share knowledge and wisdom with us in concerning mm -hmm. what we eat how it impacts our bodies, how it impacts our blood flow, how it impacts the 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 the, 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 the oils in our bodies even when it comes to our joints and how mm -hmm. although our bodies shall age, how do we can age gracefully by eating the yes. right doing the right things, diet and exercise. God, we thank you for uh, the rights. We thank you, God, that you continue to bless them uh, in their ministry of sharing when it comes to uh, right the right foods to eat. Uh, and and negate the weight to lose weight as well as to have healthy living and healthy lifestyles. God, we thank you that our health is our wealth. And as you continue to give us health, God, we grow wealthy in our families and in our communities. Help us to hear and not only hear, but help us to do. Help us to be doers of what we hear, doers of your word so that we might grow closer to you, but also that we might have healthier uh, lifestyles and, and better lives as a result of drawing closer to you. God, it's in Jesus' name that we ask that you pour back into the rights as they have poured into us tonight. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. God amen. bless you all. God bless Love you all. And we pray Love that we talk to you, too, you and see you right. soon. Okay. All right, God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.